Can't wait to meet y'all, man. I keep saying it. Y'all won't realize we spend a lot of time together. 60 hours a month. Most of y'all listen to the show from beginning to end. Okay? So, we's family, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yes. You can boo all you want. We's family. I mean, you spend that much time together. This is the third year. We've been doing this show for three hours, about a year and a half now. Maybe a year. Maybe not a year and a half. Um, maybe not a year either. Maybe like eight months. But you know what I mean. So we's family, man. So come on through, ATL. You've been looking for a reason to come to Atlanta anyway. Put a name with a face. Put a face with a, a chat group profile pic. And uh, come and kick it this weekend, man. That weekend to celebrate with your boy and all of the Stewies. The weekend of September 29th, TDSS3.com. TDSS3.com. All right? More Malcolm X talk on Movie Monday, the Doug Stewart Show. Back in three minutes. Monday to you, as much as a Monday could be happy. Uh, Man Talk Monday as well as a Movie Monday on the Doug Stewart Show. Yes, sir. Malcolm X. Uh, Spike Lee originally wanted Samuel L. Jackson for the role of West Indian Archie, uh, who I believe was played by Delroy Lindo. So, you know, uh, Malcolm X, or not Malcolm X, I'm sorry, uh, Spike Lee and Samuel L. Jackson have worked a ton of times together. Uh, I think it's safe to say uh, Spike Lee has basically put Malcolm X or, <laughs> damn it, Spike Lee basically has put Samuel L. Jackson on. Um, and to the forefront, man, and really giving them a platform to 
to be one of the biggest actors in uh, movie history, but he missed out on one of these roles. Uh, he actually had the opportunity or wanted uh, to play uh, uh, Spike Lee, wanted Samuel Jackson to play West Indian Archie. Soon after Spike Lee was announced as director and before its release, the film received criticism by black nationalists and members of the United Front to preserve the legacy of Malcolm X, headed by poet and playwright Amari Baraka, who were worried about how Lee would portray Malcolm X. Why would anybody be worried about Spike Lee, who's one of the most black, most militant people in American history, uh, will portray Malcolm X in the wrong way? One protest in Harlem drew over 200 people. Some based their opinion on dislike of Lee's previous films. Huh? Others were concerned that he would focus on Malcolm X's life before he converted to Islam. Baraka bluntly accused Spike Lee of being a buppy, stating, we will not let Malcolm X's life be trashed to make middle-class Negroes sleep easier, compelling others to write the director and warn him not to mess up Malcolm's life. Some, including Lee himself, noted the irony that many of the arguments that made against him mirror those made against Norman Jewison, who I mentioned earlier, was the first guy set to uh, to direct the movie on Malcolm X. That is crazy. I did not know. I did not know. Huh. Huh. I, I think that's a valid, uh, you know, worry to have if you think that uh, someone's going to come in and try to misportray who the man really was in one of these biopics. But damn, I mean, who else could you get better to direct the film and have it be told from the right perspective in the right way than Spike Lee? I don't think there's anybody else that you can get better to do that. Maybe at the time, Spike was still very young in his career. Maybe they thought that he was on the take by the Hollywood studios or whatever. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. And, you know, it's way after the fact. And the movie came out in 1992, so you're talking 25 years ago. And so maybe the thoughts and the opinions of Spike Lee, um, you know, weren't fully realized like they are now, how Spike Lee is definitely down for the people, I guess. Uh, Matthew Stafford threw a five-yard touchdown pass to Marvin Jones in the second quarter, and the Detroit Lions shut down Christian Hackenberg, who was horrible, <laughs> and the New York Jets 16-6 to in a preseason game on Sunday night. Stafford once again went 8 for 10. For 84 yards, Bryce Petty went 15 for 24, 160 yards, one interception. The, the Jets are probably going to go 0 for. I keep saying that. They're even horrible in preseason where the other team doesn't even give a damn. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long year if you're a Jet fan. Uh, so what? A good riddance to you. Deontay Thompson returned to missed Arizona field goal, 109 yards for a touchdown. As the first half ended and the Chicago Bears held on to beat the Cardinals 24-23. In preseason, Blaine Gabbert, 14 for 25, 174 yards, one touchdown. Uh, I guess he just didn't suck. And Mike Glennon, 13 for 18, 89 yards, one TD, one interception uh, in, uh, in, uh, for the Chicago Bears. And lastly, I don't know, two more games. Paxton Lynch led three scoring drives in his bid for the starting quarterback job. Denver forced turn. Four turnovers in the first half, and the Broncos beat the 49ers 33-14 on Saturday night. So, man, uh, Paxton Lynch looked pretty good. They they want to give him that job there based on where they draft him out of, uh, drafted him out of Memphis. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and lastly, uh, Denver wins that game 33-14. And lastly, from the weekend in the NFL, uh, Alvin Kamara ran for a 50-yard touchdown, and the New Orleans Saints beat the Charges 13-7 on Sunday night. Uh, Kelly Clemens had 10, went 10 for 17 and 99 yards. Chase Daniel 17 for 12 for 80 yards uh, for New Orleans. And I mentioned Kamara, five carries for 61 yards and one TD. And so that's it. That's all your action from this past weekend in the world of the NFL. Uh-huh. And was there another story? No. Uh, we're going to touch upon a couple little college football stories here in a second. But let me jump in the chat on Spreaker.com. 
from, let's see, who we got this? Cornelia Small, she got bucked on all fours by Billy Bob Thornton. Right. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton was the one uh, delivering the uh, <laughs> uh, the Johnson to Halle Berry and Monsters Ball. From Sidney Jackson Wright, J. Clyde, the Oscars don't mean all that much. From Bootsy, DMX should have got one for Belly. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Uh, Belly was a theatrical triumph, just like Norman, but in a different genre, you know, in the hood classic genre. From, um, let's see, uh, Bootsy says, Jam 2, Yet the Hurricane, or Yes, the Hurricane, Malcolm X, uh, Flight, Fences. So he's given all of these movies. I saw somebody mention earlier in the chat, Denzel should have had five, and I guess he's talking about Jam 2. Denzel Washington should have had about five Oscars by now. Easily. Like, off the top of my head, I gave y'all four that he should have a damn Oscar for. Malcolm X, Glory, um, uh, A Soldier Story. Um, should have got one, which he did get one for Training Day. And so, yeah, you talk about uh, the Hurricane, Fences. Should have got one this past year for Fences, which was BS he didn't get it. He acted his ass off, man. <laughs> and, you know, he did Fences on Broadway for for a, a, a time period. So, man, if you go back and watch, you can tell Fences was set up like a play in the way they delivered their lines. They had these long lines, her or him and uh, Viola Davis in that movie, man. Uh, I agree. I agree. But you you know what it is. <laughs> Mo Cheese, the Laker fan, definitely can't wait to get up with y'all. I took off that weekend and Monday and Tuesday to recoup. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, can't wait to meet you, Mo Cheese, uh, Laker fan from Cornelia Small. They thought Spike Lee doing it would be how Doug would feel about Tyler Perry doing a biopic on the four founders of Omega. Hmm. Hmm. Let me read that one more time to make sure I understand your point. He says, they thought Spike Lee doing it would be how Doug would feel about Tyler Perry. Oh, okay. Um, I guess so. Here's the thing about that, though, that, that comparison, that analogy. Um, and I see where you're going with that. If, if, if there's a, a, a film writer or a director that's part of the nation of Islam, you know, that could have done the story just as good as or better than Spike Lee, then I would understand. But I don't know of any heralded filmmaker, director, you know, on the level of Spike Lee that could have gotten it out to the masses, would have been able to get it out, you know, marketing-wise through these Hollywood studios where there's a lot of politics involved, I would believe, um, more so than Spike Lee. But but I, I hear what you're saying, and I guess it has to be something – uh, you know, to truth of, of that statement, Cornelia Small, because, like, it, it really shocked me to read those those facts, those those uh, little tidbits that that the uh, the people that that were close to Malcolm X and people in the Nation of Islam didn't want Spike Lee telling the story. That's very very um, revealing uh, when you think about it. Four zero four eight two two five four six seven is the number to the show. We're gonna take a break here. We come back, man. More of your chat messages in the chat room on Spreaker dot com, and uh, still talking today on this this movie Monday. I like movie Monday, man. Yeah. So week one of movie Monday was you know a comedy. And coming to America, this week is more of a drama, uh, you know, with Malcolm X. So we're going to flip it on y'all, man. Every Monday, movie Monday, here on the Doug Stewart Show. Back in three minutes. Don't go away.
Uh, there was a scuffle. The brother was just watching. Yeah, and the cop came on and said, move on. The brother didn't move quick enough for the old thing. I mean, crack, he was bleeding like a stuck hog. So what you...